Hello, welcome to the Advanced Topics Workshop for CS Academy, for CS Ed Week. My name is Olivia. Um, I'm a junior at CMU. My major is math, and for CS Academy, I'm kind of just a volunteer um, for this project in particular. So now let's actually get into what we're trying to make here. When I run my code, this is the first thing I see. It's this blank canvas, except when I hover my mouse about on the top of the canvas, um, I see this toolbar. Notice I can click on these different buttons, and what this does is indicates to the code what tool I want to use. So this is the pen. Um, there's also a circle. You can change the color, so I picked yellow. Um, a square, and you can also adjust the thickness of either the pen or the border width for anything you want. I make a pink line and some text can add here. And in on the right side of the canvas, we see this button that says inside. So the goal here is to make kind of a holiday card. So this would be the cover of your card. And then on the inside, you have pretty much the same tools. You can still make a square, you can still make a circle, draw, etc. except there's also this little toggle here. And when I press that, it kind of starts snowing and you have these little hills build up at the bottom. When you turn it off, all of that goes away. Turn it on, it starts again. Um, and then the final component of this is that there's this little play button down here. And when I click this play button, what happens is we see the cover of the card and it slowly fades in to the inside of the card. And the computer is going to be a little bit slow because of screen sharing and all. But now we get to this menu once the card is finished playing. Um, and I can either continue editing the card I was just working on, or I can have a brand new card. So that's what we're aiming for here. One thing to know about this project is that I'm using CMU CS3 graphics to complete it. So that's this import. Um, if you wanted to make the project, you could follow along with CMU CS3 graphics. Um, CMU Sandbox also has this really fun feature up here. If you click share, you can actually record a 10 second video. So as you saw with the animation, it would be a fun idea to maybe make a card and then record a 10 second video and hit play. You can have a video of your animation. So the next thing I think we'll do is kind of go over the code that we're going to be starting with. This can be kind of a pretty big project, so we're not going to write the code all the way from scratch. We're going to write a lot of parts of it together, but I have some code for us to start out with. So when you open the starter file, you see our initializing the model right up front. First thing we see, there's a couple of helper functions that I created. The first one is to initialize the transition state. So this is all of the um, variables pertaining to when we saw that fade from the cover to the inside. Um, so this is just the fade out Boolean because that's the transition that I wrote. You can write all kinds of transitions, transitions so I put some Booleans in there in case you want to add any. Um, this is to initialize the cover state. So the cover opacity starts at 100. The inside opacity starts at 100. And we'll get into this a little bit later and why we need that. Um, but then the snow state, um, this is just going to say that if it's snowing, then we'll say it's snowing. If it's not snowing, we'll say it's not snowing, depending on what the user passes in right here. Um, and then this whole thing pertains to the dimensions of all of the buttons and kind of the margins. So just kind of pick numbers that looks good. Um, and then in on app start, we call all of those functions. And then we set a couple other things. So the tool is going to start out as the pen. The pen color is going to start out as black, background color white, some thickness, text scalar, because the scalar and the, and the pen thickness aren't super matched up, so I'm going to scale the text a little bit. Um, and then here's all of our tools, and here's all of our colors. Then we have some Booleans, so show toolbar is going to start at false, and then we'll set it to true when our mouse goes in that region. 
um, editing cover, we're going to start out as editing the cover, um, is typing, if we're typing text, is sliding, if we're sliding the slider, is playing, if we're playing the animation, and finished playing screen, if we're done playing and we're seeing those two buttons where we get to pick if we want to keep editing or start a new card. The opt-out steps, talk about that a little bit later as well. Now we get to the control. So let's start with on mouse move. So the thing we care about for the most part in on mouse move is if we want to show the margin or not. So you'll see we had this variable app.toolbar margin. And if our mouse Y is smaller than that, so if it's like closer to the top of the screen than that margin, then I'm going to show the toolbar. Otherwise, I'm not. OK, cool. So let's scroll a little bit more down to on mouse press. So in on mouse press, essentially, one of two things is going to happen. Either we're pressing one of the buttons, meaning I'm trying to change the tool, I'm trying to change the color, I'm trying to change which screen I'm editing, I'm trying to start sliding the slider for thickness, I'm trying to play the animation. So in on mouse press, I want to check if all of those things are happening. So that's what all of these functions and this function do. I just scrolled past them. Essentially, there are a lot of bounds checking to see if you're within the bounds of the buttons. Then the other thing that we could do is draw something. So whether that's like a line with your pen or it's making a shape, dragging the corner of the shape down or erasing. So that's the other thing I wanna check to see if we're doing. All right, so then we get to on mouse drag, which is a pretty important function for us. And again, has two main purposes. Either we're sliding the slider to adjust the thickness or we're drawing something. So those are gonna be the two things we wanna handle in on mouse drag. And here this code is just dealing with the sliding part, but we are going to handle the drawing part together. On key press, we can kind of gloss over all of this code pertains to just um, the text and like adding different characters to the text. Like for example, if the key is space, we wanna add a space. We don't wanna add the word space. And then, on mouse release is going to hold a lot of the same um, purpose as on mouse press and on mouse drag. Either we want to stop sliding our slider or we are done with a drawing that we're doing. Like if I draw a line and then I stop, then that drawing is finished. And no matter where I move my mouse anymore, I don't want to continue that drawing until I press it again. And then lastly, on step, all of this pertains to the animation, and this is kind of why I glossed over cover opacity and inside opacity before, but we're going to talk about it now. So this first thing is saying, are we playing the animation right now? And if we are, we're going to keep track of how many times on step is called. Now, the reason for this is because I want to stop playing the animation after about 10 seconds. So when app.steps gets 300, I know that it's been called 300 times, so I'm at 10 seconds. Um, so is playing is going to be false, and I'm going to show the playing, the finished playing screen. And I want the cover opacity and the inside opacity to both be 100 again. The only time where cover opacity and inside opacity aren't 100 is in this region down here. Because in the animation, after about two seconds, which is this check right here, I want the cover opacity to start to fade away so that the inside opacity can start to fade in. So when I'm playing the animation, the inside opacity is going to be zero at first. The cover opacity is going to be 100 at first. And after about two seconds, the cover will start to fade away. The inside will start to fade in. And it'll appear that the cover is like fading into the inside. And then we'll be able to see the inside. So um, these are just those increments, incrementing the inside opacity and decrementing the cover opacity so that we can get that transition. This will only happen if we're playing the animation. Cool, so now let's talk about our drawing functions. We can kind of skip over pretty much most of this right now um, because it's more applicable to redraw all. And here we go. Redraw all just has a bunch of helper functions that go into completing this function. So for example, up here, 
if we're playing the animation, we want to draw it. So instead of putting everything in redraw all, we're just going to call that helper function whose sole job is to play the animation. Maybe we're on the finished playing screen. And in this case, I'm going to draw the finished playing screen. Um, so that's what that function does. Otherwise, now we're not playing the app. So let's draw the animation button. Now this is a button I don't wanna see if I'm not playing the animation, but it is what I wanna see otherwise. So I'm good to draw that. And if I'm showing the toolbar, which this bool is gonna tell us, then I'll draw the toolbar, I'll draw the color selection, I'll draw the thickness selection, and I'll draw the screen toggle, meaning like, am I editing the cover or the inside? And then the last thing that this is gonna do is if we're not editing the cover, we're gonna draw the snow toggle. Um, this is because the snow, toggle, the snow is only gonna be a feature um, in the inside of the card. So this is pretty much the starter code that we're given. Um, all of this stuff, these drawing functions, some of them aren't written because we're gonna have to do it, but some of them are just to give us kind of a head start. Um, it's essentially just using the bounds and the um, initializing function where we had like all of those sizes and dimensions. It's just using those, doing some math and placing them in the right spot. You might be wondering, what does this code get us? What is this starter code giving us? How far into the project are we? And the answer to that is, right here. So you see like my mouse will make the toolbar show up. We saw that in the code. Um, and there's these buttons, there's this play button, except when I click on these tools, we can see that they're being clicked, right? We can see the colors are being clicked, that the slider moves, but I can't draw anything. Right now I'm moving, I'm clicking my mouse. The square, nothing is being made. So that's one thing that we're gonna have to tackle together is to draw the shapes and to draw the pen marks and all of that fun stuff. Okay, so now we can take a look at the actual code and start to fill some of this in. The first thing I'm looking at is all the way up here where we initialize the model. And I have these two helper functions, initialize cover state and initialize inside state. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to be working solely in the cover state and trying to get those drawings done. And then I'll fill in all the inside state stuff before we get to the snow falling. And at the end of it, you guys will have all of it, all of the cover code, all of the inside code. So don't worry about it. But for right now, we're just gonna do the drawing for the cover state. So first thing that we wanna think about is like I said, storing a list. So over here, when I initialize the cover state, I'm going to say app dot and we can say cover drawings. And to start, I don't have any. So I'm just going to initialize this to be an empty list. This begs the question, when do we add to this list? Well, like we saw before, when I'm drawing, I have to press down the mouse to indicate the code that I actually want to start drawing. This tells me I need to add something to on mouse press which is on mouse press right here. So we can see that we already have a lot of code here. And all of this, all these check functions are just seeing if we pressed a button, but there's this one at the end that we have left unwritten. And this is called start new drawing. So start new drawing is what's going to be called every time we press down on our mouse. It makes sense, right? Like we're trying to start a new drawing right now. Now we have to decide what we actually want to store in that list. What do I care about as soon as I press down? If we look back at our model, we're storing a couple things in here that could be helpful to us. We're storing the pen color and we're storing the thickness. And when we draw a line or a shape or something like that, what we care about is the color, the thickness, and also the coordinates. But the coordinates will come when we start moving our mouse and actually telling the computer where we want the lines to start and end. So right now, 
will actually suffice to just uh, like have a list that has the color of the drawing and the thickness that we want the drawing to be. For shapes, this could be the border width. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, is that for the eraser, we wanna actually be drawing in whatever color the background color is. That's kind of gonna be our cheat for doing erase right now. So I can have a special case here for when app that tool is erased. So now that I'm thinking about the fact that I want to do different things for different tools, what we might want to do is have the first thing in the list indicate to us which tool we're actually using. So we'll have some current drawing equal and then erase at the background color, which is another thing we had. And we'll do at the thickness. Notice how I had app.cur drawing and not app.cover drawings. When we are drawing something on the canvas, cover drawings is going to be everything that's already been done. It's over, it's already on the canvas, it's solidified on there. And the current drawing is gonna be what we're in the process of drawing. It's important to separate these two because for curve drawing, we want the user to be able to see where their mouse is dragging a square or where their mouse is drawing a curve or something as they do it. So we're gonna to need to keep a separate list of all of that information. And then once we're done with it, we just throw it in the main list with everything else. So otherwise, if we're not doing the eraser, then we can just say app.cur drawing equals and then app.tool and then app.pen color and the same with thickness in this case as well. Now you'll see up here, text actually turns out to be a bit of a special case in multiple functions. But in this one, we're gonna case on if the tool is text, because if it is, um, what I'm gonna do instead of just having something like this is I'm going to case on if it's typing, if we're already typing, because I have this tool app.isTyping. When we press down on a mouse to type something, what actually tells us that we're done typing is if we press somewhere else, as opposed to a drawing where we're, we indicate that we're done drawing if we release our mouse. So typing actually turns out to be a little bit of a special case with this. So if we're already, or if we're not typing yet, then we're just gonna tell the computer we're typing. But if we are already typing and we press the mouse, that's kind of like our indication, okay, we're done with that piece of text. And this gives us a little bit of a indication as to what's gonna happen for the drawings, um, where we'll say app.cover drawings dot pen app dot curve drawing. Note that this is a list and this is also a list. This is what we call a 2D list where elements in a list are themselves lists. Now, when you loop through that big outer list, you can access those elements the same way you would if they were numbers or strings, except the element you access is just going to be a regular list. This is going to be helpful to us because if everything in here is just something we're going to draw and we want to draw all of these things, eventually we can just loop through this to draw everything. All right, so in the drawing process, we've now completed the first step, which is telling our computer that we're drawing, which is on mouse press. The second thing is in most cases, meaning the pen and the shapes and the eraser, when we draw on mouse drag is gonna be really helpful to us because on mouse drag is gonna tell us the places on the canvas that we're passing through as we're dragging our mouse, which is exactly what, what we want our, like line to be like, or our pen drawing to be like. So here is just some code for the slider. We're gonna work down here and think about what we might want to add in order for us to be able to have access to the right things, to draw the right things later on. Here's where we can start thinking of different cases. 
first case, like last time, was text. We don't really care about mouse drag for text, right? Like the way it worked was I just pressed my mouse and then I got to type there and I pressed my mouse somewhere else. That drawing is done. So on mouse drag isn't necessarily applicable. So right off the bat, I'm just going to say if app.tool equals text, then we can just return. We don't want to do anything. Otherwise, there's a couple of other cases remaining even still. You can have either a pen or an eraser, or you can have a shape like a square, a circle, or a line. These things are different because when I'm drawing a line, I care about every single coordinate that I pass through because I want every single one of those lines to remain on the screen. However, if I'm drawing a square, like we saw in the demo earlier, when I drag the corner of the square out, I don't want to see all of those previous squares that I would have been drawing. I just want to see the most recent square drawn. So this gives us a little bit of a difference here. So if at that tool was pen, or if at that tool, tool was erase, then with app.curd drawing, I actually want to append mouse X and mouse Y so that every time my mouse is dragged, I have the mouse X and the mouse, and the mouse Y. I have all of them. Otherwise, if I'm doing a shape, I kind of don't need the, the like la previous most recent coordinate, right? Like I only really need the first coordinate that I added and this coordinate, mouse X, mouse Y. So instead, we're going to write this helper function called update shape, and that'll need app, app.card drawing, mouse X, and mouse Y. So now let's write that function. I think, oh yeah, put it right here. Awesome. So there's two cases for updating a shape. Either we haven't added any points to it at all, in which case this is our first point, so we should put it there. Or we already have one point, in which case this is our second point, so we need it. Otherwise, if we already have two points in the list, then that last point, the last point in the list, I just want to write over that. I want to put something else there instead of that, because I don't care about that anymore. So how I'm going to check for which case I'm actually in is if the length of the current shape, current shape, is less than five. Because remember, we had the, sh the name square, we had the color, and we had the back or the width, the border width. So that's already three spots. Then the fourth spot should be the first coordinate, and the second spot should be the second coordinate. So if it's less than five, this means I either need to add that first coordinate or I still need to add the second coordinate. In either case, I should just append mouse x and mouse y. However, if I already have two coordinates, then that most recently added coordinate, I don't need that anymore. I just need the starting one. So current shape at four, which would have been that index of that most recent coordinate, is now going to be mouse x, mouse y. Cool. So now let's enter, enter kind of the last process in getting all the drawing information that we need before we go into redraw all. And that's on mouse release. So we've done the press, we've done starting the drawing, we've done the drag, so we've done getting all those points. Now we need to actually end that drawing and say, okay, that drawing's done. I just want to throw it in the list where everything gets drawn all the time. I don't need this to be my current drawing anymore because it no longer needs to be updated. So for that, we turn to on mouse release where we can say app.cover drawings. And again, I'll go in and add some stuff for the inside drawings, which will be super similar. And then I'll just append app.cur drawing to that list. So this is pretty much the same as what we did in the text for the text in on mouse press, except this is happening in on mouse release. 
And note that um, cur drawing is not being reset to an empty list here because we don't necessarily need to. Because the next time that we press the mouse, this function that we wrote will be called, this function, this function that we wrote will be called, which is just going to entirely reset app.cur drawing to be a new list. So we don't need to reset it in on mouse release. Okay, so that pretty much concludes everything we need for the control for these drawing functions. Now we actually need to draw them using all of that information we just gave to the control that we now have access to. So let's start doing draw pen drawing, which is going to be just the pen tool and we draw all those squiggly shapes, whatever we want. That's what we're going to be trying to do right now. So when you think about how we were building this um, like app.cur drawing up when we were using a list, um, sorry, when we were using the pen, we added every single coordinate um, that we dragged our mouse through. So if I look at all of those coordinates side by side in pairs, and I draw lines between all of those, then I'm just going to get one fluid line that doesn't even really look like it's made of tiny little lines but it is. So the way that we're gonna wanna do that is just by looping through all of those coordinates and for each one accessing the one right next to it and then drawing a line between those two points. So let's first just make sure that drawing is not empty. And if it's not, then we can go ahead and start with our function. So. What I'm going to do is just extract the fill and the line width. So the fill was that first or that second, I guess, thing that we put in the list. And the line width is going to be that second thing. Remember, drawing at zero would just say pen. Now I'm going to loop through the rest of the list. So. In order to look through the rest of the list, what I'm gonna do is just start at three. And let's just leave that there for now. Let's talk about what we wanna get out. So I can get my start X, my start X value. Remember with a line, we just have a start X, a start Y, and an end X and an end Y. So start X and start Y can just be whatever element in the list that we're currently looking at. Now I need an end X and an end Y. And like we said before, that's just gonna be whatever coordinate is right next to that list, which is gonna end up being drawing at I plus one. Okay, right, end X and Y. And the way we'll do that is drawing at I plus one. Now with that information in mind, since I'm accessing I plus one, usually if I was just doing a for loop like this, I'd wanna go to the length of the list. However, because I'm accessing I plus one here, the thing I need to do is actually go to the length of the list minus one so that I can safely access this last coordinate. And what this is going to get me is the first and the second, and then the second and the third, and then the third and the fourth, so that we have one fluid drawing. So now let's just draw that. It's going to be a line. It's going to be start x, start y, end x, end y. And then our fill will be that fill we did before. And line width will be that same deal. And then that variable that we use for the transition opacity can just be that opacity that gets passed in to the straw line. And now that we've done drawing with pen, we're gonna work on drawing one square. There's a bunch of other draw functions like circle and line, et cetera, but we're just gonna focus on this one and then you'll be given the other ones. Um, so now let's think about how we draw a square. Well, we need the top left coordinate and we need the length and the width. So naturally, if I have a starting coordinate 
that can just be my top left, right? And then my second one I can use to get the width and the height by subtracting those x values and subtracting those y values. However, the tricky part comes if the user tries to move, like maybe they move their mouse up instead of down, like we would normally do to make a, to make a square. In this case, their top left coordinate is not going to be that first thing they added to the list. It's actually going to be that second element that they added to the list. What this tells us is that our top left is not always going to be the first thing in the list. It could be, but it could also be the second one. And the way we decide is whichever one of those coordinates is has smaller values, like for the for the um, top value, whichever of the y's has a smaller one, meaning like it's closer to the like top left on the canvas, it'll have a smaller coordinate value, right? So that one's going to be our top left. And same thing for like the x values. Whichever one is smaller, that one's going to be our left. So how we're going to handle that is, well, we're going to first start off with our checks. We have some safe accessing. So if length of the square is greater than four, then I know I have enough information to proceed. So my fill is once again going to be square at one. My border width is going to be square at square at two. And then my start x tentatively, start x and start y are going to be square three at zero and square four at zero. I'm sorry, square three at one. Remember this is a tuple, so I'm just accessing the two elements in the tuple. And then the end x is gonna be pretty much the same thing, except we won't have it be the third index in the list. It'll just be the last one. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by using negative one. That's one way we can get the last element in the list. And now that I have all of that information, this should be end x and end y, I can enter my square drawing process. So like I said before, we want to find the minimum value of that, those y values and those x values so that we know which one is actually the top left. So the top should be the minimum of start x and x. And the left is going to be the minimum of start y and y. The width will be the absolute value of end x minus start x. And the height will be the absolute value of end y minus start y. And note that I don't want to find the width and height of something if these two things are equal to each other, because I don't want our width to be zero. In fact, CS Academy will yell at us if our width is zero. So before I do this, I'm just going to have a check to make sure they're not equal. So if end x doesn't equal start x and end y doesn't equal start y, then I know I'm good that there is actually a width between these things. And I can now proceed to actually drawing my rectangle. So I'm just going to give it top left. And actually, this should be top should be y. My apologies. Left should be x. And we start with left. My apologies. So, well, so left, top, and then width and height, which I believe are still correct. Yep. And then fill. Our rectangle is going to be empty. So fill will be none. Order is going to be our fill that we found. And then we'll have the border width be border width, border width, which is just our thickness. And then the opacity, same deal, is just going to be opacity. 
that we passed into that function. So now we're nearing the end of all of our drawing business. What we have to do is write functions to draw the current drawing, that one that's being repeatedly drawn over and over, and draw all the drawings, the ones that are finished and aren't changing anymore. Let's do draw curve drawing first and proceed with first checking that we actually have a drawing. Now that I've done that, this is where that tool comes in handy because I know I can extract the tool by going to the zero with index of this given list. And now all I really have to do is case on the tool because I have all of these lovely functions that I wrote for each of the different tools. So for example, if tool is 10 or tool, yeah, tool is a race, oh my gosh, then I want to call draw pen drawing, that first one we just wrote. Drawing and opacity, opacity is just being passed around everywhere. Similarly, if tool was square, I would just draw one square with drawing and opacity. And we're going to do that same exact thing for all of the different tools. So circle, line, and text. For time and because I'm the slowest typer on the face of the planet, I'll finish those off camera. And we're going to proceed to draw all drawings right now. Now, this is the kind of thing I was talking about earlier, where we're going to have a list app.cover drawings, which is full of all of the drawings that we've already completed and they're done and we wanna put them on the canvas, just always. We're gonna have a list of all of those shapes, which just happen to be lists as well. So what I really need to do here is go through all of the drawings in the, in the master list of drawings and just draw them. How am I going to draw them? Well, I have this function that draws whatever I want because it has it draws whatever it wants. So if I draw a curve drawing and just give it that drawing and opacity, this is just going to do all of the work for us. This is going to do all the work for us because this is doing all the work for us and all the work for this is being done by these top functions. The beauty of top-down design. Okay, so we're on our very last step for the drawing portion of the project, and that's adding all of this into redraw because none of this is gonna be drawn at all if we don't throw it in here somewhere. So all of this code up here pertains to the animation as well as this one. And all of this code pertains to drawing all of those tools and buttons and stuff. So we're just going to put all of the stuff that we want to do. Let's say we put it up right here. And I'll say draw all drawings app. And this, you might have noticed that draw all drawings takes in a screen. That's because later when we have the cover drawings and the inside drawings, we wanna know which one that we actually wanna loop through. Right now I just picked cover drawings, but we'll have a conditional in there later to decide. So right now I'll just say cover as the screen and I'll say that the opacity is gonna be a hundred because I want to see it without any transparency at all. And this is gonna draw all of the drawings in the actual cover drawings list, all of those finalized ones. Like we said before, we also wanna see the current drawing being drawn as it's being drawn, no matter if it's square or if it's text or if it's a line. And to do that, I'm also gonna draw the current drawing and pass in app.curdrawing. And use that same function that we wrote earlier to do that. Obviously, I don't know why I did this because you can't break up stuff like that. I'll put this here. Um, 
Awesome. Okay, so like I said before, this is just going to draw all of the drawings that we have. This is going to draw the current one. And then we should be good to have our drawing functionality. So I'll go in and add all those inside ones and we'll see what we have. Okay, so I went ahead and added in all of the codes so that we can have drawings on the inside of the card as well. Usually what that looks like is something like this, where you case on whether you're looking at the cover or the inside and then assign either cover drawings or inside drawings based off of that. Um, a lot of the time we'll use this variable called editing cover, which looks like this, and that'll tell us It'll be true if we're editing the cover and false if we're editing the inside. And then all the way up here in this initialized cover state, we added cover drawings before. We also added inside drawings. So this is the one that would be appended to if you finish a drawing and you're working on the inside of the card. So the next step now and the last thing we're going to do together is to get the falling snow to work. As a reminder, um, the falling snow appears when we're editing the inside of the card. And if I turn on this toggle, we see all of these differently sized circles start to fall from the sky. And after a while, they build up these little hills. We're not gonna do the hills together. I just kind of added them for fun. So you'll have that in the code and you won't need to worry about it. But that's what the snow looks like. So our next step is going to be to turn our attention right here to initialize snow state. We kind of glossed over it before because we were focusing on the drawings, but now is initialize snow state's time to shine. So we want to think about how we want to attack the snowfall problem. Now we noticed that there was just a bunch of circles falling from the sky. And if the circles are going to be something that we end up drawing, then we're going to want to keep track of them somehow. And similarly to how we were drawing before, it might be helpful to store information about each of those circles in a list. So in initialize snow state, I'm going to add app.snowflakes and I'll make that equal to an empty list because to start out, we'll have no snowflakes. And then these two variables apply to the hills part. So don't worry about that. And this variable right here is just a bool that's going to tell us if the user wants it to be snowing or not. Um, you'll see up here, this takes in that bool and we can just set it equal to whatever that is. So now we need to actually fill up that list somehow. And the way we're going to do that is with this function called add snow. So you might have noticed that all of those circles falling from the sky were of different sizes. And the fact that they were falling in different X coordinates on the canvas is not really a hard coded thing either. If we want to get something that like is just random, like they were randomly placed along the X axis of the canvas and they had random sizes, there's actually something really cool we can use. If we go up top and import random, which is right here, this allows us to use a couple cool things that essentially just give us back a random number. So for example, if I said random.randint, it has a funny name, just ignore that. And I gave it the numbers zero and we'll say app.with minus one. What this is gonna do is it's gonna shoot me back a random number between zero and app.with minus one. So we did the minus one because this is inclusive actually, um, which is something new for us, I guess. So I just subtracted one so we wouldn't get an out of bounds error. So let's have this just serve as our random X starting point on the canvas. So we'll say that's the X and see why, since we wanna start at the top is always gonna be zero. So now we have a CX and a CY. We have almost everything we need to draw a circle. The last thing we need is a radius. And since those radiuses, those circles were all different sizes as well, we're just gonna pick a random size for the radius using this same function. So random.randint. And that's gonna take in smaller numbers. So we'll do one to 10, just cause these are kind of cute. I don't know, you can make any size you want. 
cool. So now we have all of the makings for a new snowflake to be added to our snowflake list. Another thing we want to do, though, is the snowflakes were falling. If I just left it like this and just kept adding something like this to my snowflakes list, but never incremented CY, my snowflakes would just stay at the top of my canvas and they would never fall. So one important thing that we need to do is, well, let's first add this snowflake to our snowflakes list, and then let's make the rest of the snowflakes fall. So at that snowflakes dot append, and the way that I'm going to store these snowflakes is with a list. So we have another 2D list, hooray. And since the circle cares about CX, CY, and the radius, that's just exactly what I'm going to give it. And now we can increment those Y values. So for snowflakes, for snowflake in app.snowflakes, to access the Y value, since it's a list, I know this is always going to be at index one. And since it's a list, I can change it. It's not a tuple. So I'll say snowflake at one. And I'll just plus equals 10. So just increment that y value by 10. So it's going to give the illusion that the snowflake is falling. The other thing that we need to consider is that there's going to be a lot of snowflakes falling from the sky. So if we don't want our computer to have to keep looking at every single snowflake we create, that's something we can handle because we only really care about the snowflakes that the user can see on the canvas. Once they fall down past the canvas, we don't care if they're in the list anymore. In order to do that, we want to only keep in the list the snowflakes that are still on the screen, meaning the snowflakes whose Y values are still less than the height of the canvas. So I'm gonna build up a new list, new snowflakes, and that'll be empty at first. And then in this loop, in the same loop where we're incrementing the y value, I'll say if snowflake at one, so that y value is less than at that height, then I know I'm good to add it to new snowflakes. It's still safe, it's still on the canvas, it's still something I want to show. And then at the end of this loop, once I've gone through all of the snowflakes, incremented their y values, and decided which ones I want to keep. I'll just set app.snowflakes to be equal to new snowflakes. And now when we head on over to onstep, since we know we want that add snow function to be called all the time, so we keep adding new snow, onstep is going to just do that for us. It's just going to keep calling things over and over again. So why do we not just give it add snow? So I'll say if app.is snowing, then I'll just call add snow. And I don't really need to give add snow everything because if I give it app, it just has access to everything it needs. So now we're just gonna have something that keeps adding snow wherever we want. So the very last two steps in this process are to actually draw the snow which is something that we've set ourselves up very nicely to do because in this list that we have, app.snowflakes, what we have is a bunch of lists that contain CX, CY, and radius, which is exactly what we need to just make a circle, which is really all we need to do because it's just a white circle with a black border. So I can say CX, CY, and radius, are equal to snowflake zero. Snow, please bear with my horrible typing. Snowflake one and snowflake two. Hooray, we got there. Okay, and now that I have that information, I can just draw a circle. I'll give it CX, CY, radius. And then all I'm gonna say is that the fill is white and that the border is black. And it's not cold. And that will say the opacity 
is just going to be app dot inside opacity. This you recall is from which like we need this because of the transition because the snow is going to happen if the user presses the toggle in the inside editing portion of the card. So the opacity will always just be whatever the inside opacity is. And then last but not least, if we head on over to redraw all, all I need to do is a similar check to what I did in on step. If it's snowing, then I just want to draw the snow. And in this case, we can also draw the hills that I added in. And let's see what we have now. So if I run this code, this is what I get. If I go in the inside, I can click this little, what's it called, toggle. And then all of my snow will fall and the hills will build up. Yay, so beautiful. I can turn it off and go back to the cover. And this feels like a pretty complete project now, don't you think? Cool. So anyways, to wrap up, what we're going to do is just talk about some ways that you could add your own extra features to the project if you wanted to. So let's look at the code. Up here, I've added some potential features that might be interesting. For example, there's different transitions you could add down here. I have all of these booleans in this transition state, like slide up, slide down, left and right. So maybe you could do something where the cover starts out showing and then slides up and the inside is like waiting behind it or it slides up with the cover. And that's how you do the transition where you could do that down or left or right. So if you wanted to add another transition, what you could do is depending on what the user wants, you could set this one to false and a different one to true and then write the code for that transition and just put it into your draw like down here in this draw animation we have this check here if app dot fade out this is what we do so if you had some other code that did something else you could add that in here as well another thing that might be interesting is images um, the cs academy has a great function for drawing images it's literally just called draw image I didn't add it in this one because I knew I'd be screen sharing and also in VS Code at the same time, which already slows down the code. And images tend to slow it down a pretty decent amount. Um, but you could have in them inserted. You could have them resized. That'd be cool. You could also do undo redo. This is something that I would have liked to have when I was messing around with this, where you can like undo whatever move you just made. Not move, like whatever drawing you just made. Um, another fun thing would be like clear all. That would be kind of helpful if you wanted to clear your whole drawing. Then you could do different text fonts, different colors for the border of a shape and the fill, um, different color backgrounds. Um, although be careful because this would affect how we erase. And the structure of this code makes it fairly easy to add different buttons because you can use all of these same variables with all of these set button widths and button heights. And if you look more closely into all of these check functions, these are essentially checking the bounds of the buttons. And if you look in, they all just use the toolbar values and the button heights and widths and other such things. So you technically have everything you need if you wanted to add another tool and a button to access that tool. So that is all I have. I hope that you had fun learning about this and that you'll add a couple extra features of your own. Thanks for watching. Bye.